أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وبارك وسلم أما بعد جماعة المسلمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله جماعة المسلمين once again we are here for our weekly Juma talk and may Allah subhanahu wa taala grant that our talk all the barakah and success insha'Allah. Brothers and sisters, we this is the last Jumu'ah before the Eid al-Adha, before the Hajj insha'Allah. And we start off this talk on the premise to remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors humanity, the human species, with the aqal, with the intellect. And of course, this intellect and being honored with it by our Creator has far-reaching consequences for us in terms of our location in this existence, in terms of our functioning in the web of life of this existence of interconnectivity, interconnections. Because in order to function at our best, optimally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala serves humanity on top of the internet, serves humanity with the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, the connectivity, the nexus between revelation and reason. That seamless connection. Why? In order to guide the intellect to decision making that are beneficial to carry out the functions deemed necessary for humanity to take our proper place in this existence. To make the correct decisions, in other words. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us, in Surah Al-Rum, ayah number 15, Allah says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمْلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَهُمْ فِي رَوْدِ يُحْبَرُونَ And those we believe, of course, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the amanu, and of course does a righteous deeds work, they shall be happy and content and in the middle of delight. That's the literal sort of translation. So what it actually means is that if our belief is rooted in the haq, correct, then it automatically flows. Correct decisions will be made. Correct deeds will follow those decisions. And that will result in favorable consequences and therefore decisions and situations. This is what Allah says to us. And therefore, we know then that this existence that connectivity is extended to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. In other words, there's not just a web of life, but the deen, the connectivity between the reason and the revelation and between how we make the decisions according to the deen, there's connectivity there as well. As Allah says to us, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And of course, hold fast onto the deen, the rope, the deen, the guiding principles, divine guiding principles. Jami'an, all of you humanity, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And do not fragment. And of course, if we look at the ayah, Jami'an, 1,441 years ago, Jami'an meant those people in Arabia. Jamia today means globally. 
the development, the interconnectivity, the web of life, the web of activity. And on this basis, the annual Hajj, that fifth rukun, that humanity is honored with to perform, is to inform and remind the human species of the interconnectivity, the global ummah, in other words. In the ummah to come, ummah wahida. That really this ummah of yours is one, one humanity, the universal human family, that interconnectivity. That is as clear as daylight. Basis in the Quran, basis in logic, the intellect, and basis in the evidence that prevails across the world. So this year, brothers and sisters, 2020, we are being made acutely aware of the spiritual magnetic attraction of this core and this place, Bakka or Makkah. Simply because we will not be able to go there as Hujaj. We will not be able to go to the Beit Atiq this year. And as believers, as people of faith, our longing is to go. That is the spiritual magnetism. With the Qudra and the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been placed and located in Makkah. Only a few this year will perform the Fafrukun, the Hajj 2020, due to the pestilence, the pandemic that is prevalent now. Thus, to be with the Hujaj that signifies the interconnectivity and once a year the focal point of focusing our vision for the future of human society in terms of the Hajj, in terms to be with the Hujaj in spirit, inshallah, we're encouraged to fast by the Rasul on the day of Arafah. As Muhammad says to us, Al Hajj Arafah. And that is why on the day of Arafah from Fajr, while the Hujaz is busy with the Labaik, the non-pilgrims, the non-Hujaz, we are requested to be busy with the Takbir. That is that spiritual magnetism, that spiritual connectivity. And therefore, I would just want to remind, having made that case, of this interconnectivity of the global web of life and humanity's location within that and being part of that. I just want to remind my brothers and sisters that the fasting of the day of Arafah must be on the very day that the Hujaj performing the fifth rukun is on Arafah, that very day which this year, 2020, is going to be on Thursday, the 30th of July, inshallah. And of course, the next day, the Friday, the 31st of July, is going to be the day of Eid, inshallah. And please, my brothers and sisters, it is not correct, it is prohibited, it is haram, to fast Friday. Why do I say that? Because as we all know by now, the ridiculous situation, in fact beyond the ridiculous situation, that has been and is prevalent in our community of Muslims in this area and in our country. It makes the debacle that happened at the end of Ramadan, like a picnic, where people are being called names and 
whatever, shameful. Brothers and sisters, there is only one Arafah. And there are reasons why the Hajj cannot be performed any other place in this dunya except Makkah and its precincts. And of course, in, our, in the Hajj classes, we are taught all that. And it's not in the ambit of this talk to go into that, but just to mention it. And I just want to quote at this point, Ahmad Kamal, who wrote the book, The Sacred Journey, Ar-Rihla al muqaddasa in 1961. That's what? That's about 59 years ago. It's a long time. And Ahmad Kamal says in his book, and I quote, The Hajj is an immense congress of faithful from all corners of the earth. 59 years ago, says that. And he goes further to say further on, no other people are privileged to know such oneness of being, such singleness of purpose. And yet today, we are fighting to fragment ourselves. And the reason for that, those are, that is, the reasons, politics. That's what it is. Politics. Nothing to do with the haq. This nexus of the global ummah, which is the hajj, this global conference, Allah says, the ayah that was revealed on the day of Arafah in the Hajjatul Wida, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deen. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ Today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has perfected for humanity to follow دِينَكُمْ a methodology for your people to follow which of course is Islam. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي and completed the favors in terms of the methodology of the deen وَرَدِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ and have chosen for us the passage, the methodology, the avenue of peace to follow. So, the akmaltu, the completion, it shows the qudra, the power. Only Allah can have done, can have done that. The ni'mati, the favors, it shows the mercy, the rahmah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, the deen is based on what? On adl, on justice. So it's the power, the strength, the mercy, and the justice, the qudra, the rahmah, and the adl. Right? And it also shows that by means of revelation coming from outside this dunya, that Islam is an open system and not a closed system. And here we hear talks that we want our community to be a closed community, to form a closed system. We want political boundaries, the, the Lampopo or whatever, to be the boundaries beyond which we don't take anything else in terms of moon sighting, whatever the case may be. And the Wahi expresses the manner of development, advancement, an open system, even the sun comes from outside the system, its rays, its energy, making the earth, the solar system, the earth system, an open system, because it's, it is only in an open system that true growth and advancement can occur. Our bodies, as we're standing, sitting here, as this jasad, this body, it is an open system. Why? It cannot exist closed on itself. It needs oxygen from the outside. It needs food. It's an open system. That's how growth and development occurs. Where do we come with this idea? Where do we come? We do not think th things through properly. So we say we only take the, our political boundaries. And we want to talk about political boundaries. You know, we don't want to go into the whole thing of the colonialism thing that 
actually put down those boundaries and so forth. So we're following that. That's a story for another day. So coming back, brothers and sisters, Arafah culminates, as we know, in the universal celebration of what? The Eid al-Adha. Why? Because the Eid al-Adha, the celebration of the sacrifice, is connected intimately and seamlessly with Arafah. And this talk that there's no connection. Then why does the what of Wukuf in the morning Fajr of the day of Eid? <coughs> why did Muhammad وسلم, say, manasikakum, That Al Hajj Arafa Hajj is Arafa, and then Khudu Anni Manasikakum, take from me Muhammad وسلم, how to perform the manasik, the rituals of Hajj. And the Rasul showed us. Do we want to follow the Rasul or do you want to follow our own political aspirations and whims and fancies? We have got to make up our mind because this community has become so fragmented that it is actually shocking and dangerous. Now we have people that wants to have the Eid with the local sighting of the moon and they say the moon has not been sighted. Then we are going to have people that wants to have Eid with they say the moon has been sighted, so there's already two Eids. And then we have the people that say, we have to link up as an open system, as a global system, to the Hujaj on Arafah. You make up your mind which is the most logical and which of the three complements the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Obviously, Muhammad Sallallahu said, Al-Hajju Arafah, Khudu Anni Manasikakum, take from me and to perform. So, the Eid, in conjunction, the spiritual magnetism, in that interconnectivity with the Hujaj in Makkah, because of Alam al-Insana ma lam ya'lam, that Allah has taught humanity that which we did not know, the advance and so forth, that is the advancement. That is what the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us. Why? That this Quran, لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ It's for people who think. So if we think through it carefully, we will come to the correct conclusion. And therefore, the sacrifice, the aid of the sacrifice, what does it mean? It means the sacrifice of the self in service of humanity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean? The sacrificing of the self. That is why we say the qudra, the power, the strength, right? We sacrifice ourselves that we do not want and we're not using our Allah-given strength for selfish gains, but to selflessly serve the community, serve humanity. That's the sacrifice. That's the kudra that we have, that Allah has given to us. The mercy that we engage mercifully and not arrogantly, not cruelly, not deceitfully, with our um, community, with humanity. We cut ourselves off from arrogance. We cut ourselves off from using our strength for the wrong reasons, but to serve humanity for the benefit of humanity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the celebration of the sacrifice. That is why the five days of Hajj, it is a symbolic enactment of life. And how life should be lived in order to find the road to real progress. And of course the adal, the deen, the justice that we sacrifice to establish justice and not injustice on this dunya. 
It is the sacrifice of our, our self. The ego. And therefore, to serve humanity educationally, spiritually, socially. And as we look, we see the zakah, our accountability to humanity. How accountable we keep ourselves. The soul, our commitment, the shahada, the core, the intellectual core, to generate that, that spiritual energy of iman, to perform those deeds in a selfless way and to cut our ego and downsize our ego to serve humanity and not ourselves arrogantly. And of course, this culminates in the Hajj, the global Ummah. That, brothers and sisters, is the celebration of Eid al-Adha, the celebration of the sacrifice. That is the connectivity between Wukuf and Eid. And there is and never will be any disconnection. So in other words, as we physically korban, sacrifice, that symbolizes, so I cut myself off from those things. I sacrifice them. I cut it away to serve humanity. So let us realize and enact and be part of this universal connectivity which is a most natural phenomenon. For Allah says, That verily, really, this is one ummah. One ummah, one humanity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one to submit to. Not our egos, not our arrogance, not our political aspirations, whatever the case may be. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we plea to make it easy for the khujaj inshallah this year. And make it easy for the global ummah of humanity to remove the pestilence inshallah. We say to the khujaj inshallah, may Allah grant you hajj maqbul and mabrur inshallah. And may the future of humanity be a bright one inshallah. And most importantly also at this point in time, with the situation we have in our country and amongst our Muslims. May with the sincere effort, may we as a community come to our senses and do what is right, what is logical, and to see the interconnectivity, the seamless connection between the reason and the revelation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us with our effort, insha'Allah. Juma Mubarak, shukran. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته